place for a look at the mission. A little more details. So this Soyuz mission is made of two phases, the three-story phase and the frigate orbital phase. The three-story phase starts with the launch. Two minutes after that, we have the separation of the four lateral boosters. The flight continues with the separation of the fairing after 3.4 minutes approximately, and then the separation of the second stage after five minutes. The flight continues until about nine minutes into the flight, the frigate stage then determines whether it has or does not have enough energy to go all the way to the final orbit. It decides to separate them and then the uh, separated bodies fall into the Atlantic. This continues then with the flight of Frigat with two boosters with the main engine. The first boot, 800 seconds long, enables a transfer of the uh, upper uh, stage and the payload to a next elliptical orbit. And then the second boost, which takes place much later, three and a half hours after liftoff, circularizes this orbit in order to reach the uh, final satellite orbit, which is at uh, 23,000 kilometers approximately. 300 seconds after the end of the second boost, the payload is separated. The two Galileo and IOV uh, satellites are separated simultaneously in two opposite directions. Frigat then continues its mission for five hours until it gets to its graveyard orbit, which is at 300 kilometers above the operational orbit of the satellites. Very concise explanation there by Blaise de Chantonnet of Ariane Space. What's up next? Uh, we have had the uh, meteor meteorological uh, report uh, saying that all the criteria uh, uh, and specific conditions of wind velocity at low and high altitude, cloud thickness and assessment of lighting risks are now uh, green. So uh, you can see on the uh, green panel when we get back to Jupiter that uh, everything is fine on on this side, so the meteor is green for the launch date. That's a, that's, a good, that's a good item that we have there. Another similarity with the Ariane flights is the launch management. We're taking the camera up uh, closer to the launch pad. You see what those people are doing. Yeah, we saw Jean-Claude Garot, the launch operations manager on Ariane space side, and now Dimitri Baranov, the launch operations manager on the Russian side. Well, there are two teams, the uh, European teams and the Russian teams. Working in... Pretty close cooperation, and Frank Vasseur are in charge of the uh, production aspects of the of the launcher. So this first Russian and European team uh, cooperation, with who uh, led the people to conduct all the launch space activities, constitute in itself a great multicultural achievement. These people are crew. about. Uh, oh, there's a key on the. Ah, we right. see the key. It's the famous key that turns on the uh, the final. Yes, launch, uh, uh, wondering who will uh, keep the key after the launch. Waiting on the pad, just under three minutes. Inside the fairing, the satellite's maintained in cool and clean condition through uh, ventilation inside the uh, inside the launcher. You know, and it looks like he's going to call out uh, one of the final back to Jupiter operations. Waiting for the umbilical mass to uh, be pulled off the launcher. We see this mass with the. Uh, umbilical plugs which are connected to the, uh, the satellites. base of the fairing and uh, ensure the electrical connection with the satellites. And what happens is they are pulled away. There's the DDO calling out the dis disconnection, disconnection of, of the, the umbilical, umbilical plugs these are and, electrical then, umbilicals. and then this big metallic mass will be pulled off the launcher. There, there are connections for the satellites, electrical connections for the lower stage and for the upper stage. Now Three the satellites umbilicals. are totally autonomous and uh, on, on uh, internal power supply. Well, we are still uh, topping up the uh, oxy liquid oxygen inside the propellant tanks of the first, uh, second and third stage. Coming up on a minute, we'll be into the final minute, final 60 seconds of this historic uh, first launch of Soyuz. Big crowd on that, lots of press here, as you can imagine. Witnessing space history. Maybe we should uh, give a rundown on the, of the ignition sequence, which you'll see, which is a little different than Ariane. Yeah, this what sequence uh, starts approximately 17 seconds before liftoff, and the 20 engines will be ignited first at low thrust level, then intermediate level, and finally full level, enabling the propulsion for DDO is going to call out the one minute mark now and we'll be into the final 60 seconds before liftoff. Top, one minute. 
uh, we are within the last minute before liftoff. You can't hear, you can hear a pin drop here in Jupiter. People are so attentive. They're starting to go out here, the invited guests going out on the terraces on either side here. They're going to watch the launch from outside. Remember what Alex said, at minus 15 seconds, the first controlled ignition at a weak pressure, minus 7 seconds, and a second one, an intermediate pressure, testing the engines at about 50%, monitoring them while it's still on the pad, and then at minus 3 seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase at full throttle. We'll let you no, watch. Because it ends. There comes the umbilical, right on time. We're ready to go. We'll let you watch the liftoff, and we'll be back with you after Soyuz has cleared the Tower. Enjoy it, everybody. Top début de, début de séquence d'allumage lanceur. Largage de carré, ça coûte. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top. Décollage. have it a page of space history has just been written that you were present at its creation as were we alex is almost in tears next to me yeah you were, you were cheering so is on. And gorgeous beautiful uh, lighting up the, uh, uh, the morning sun the ddo saying everything is fine on board so is lifting off perfectly from the soil here in her new home in french Guiana, guyana beginning her mission number 1777 these pictures will go around the world they're already on the internet you'll see them in the papers and tv tomorrow uh, 313 tons at liftoff less than half of the mass of uh, Ariane 5. Alex, on the left, on the upper part of the screen, what are we looking at? Uh, the white curve, which shows the uh, flight prediction, which is entirely computed, and the white spot uh, on the curve shows the real-time position of the launcher. This position is uh, regularly sent by the launcher telemetry system and received by the tracking stations and then sent to Kourou, and uh, where it is transmitted to the computers here in Kourou. And, uh, can see the curve and the spot on the so you can follow that normal. along with that the DDO says everything is normal on board on the lower left the two bottom lines A and V on the lower left then we have the altitude uh, 30 36 37 kilometers now and the velocity 1.6 kilometers per second and the speed needed to inject the satellites is will be at about uh, 7.6 kilometers per second okay. so uh, keep your eyes on the numbers folks the boosters are burning now produced in Samara in Russia the boosters are the first stage and you can see they just have Separation been separated, the DDO booster. says it, at uh, 118 seconds, two minutes roughly. That's coming right on time. We're into the uh, second phase of the flight. The second stage is, uh, is burning now. The next milestone coming up will be jettisoning of the fairing. Coming up in about... Uh, Minute, I would say. Yeah, we are now heading to. In fact, we are heading to Europe, uh, northeast, uh, normal. at 54 degrees inclination, and uh, everything is fine on board, and the uh, all the parameters are, are following are the curve. The boosters uh, weighed 45 tons each at liftoff, and uh, working with liquid oxygen and kerosene. So we are at about 100 kilometers uh, altitude, and then the fairing will be jettisoned. Fairing provides uh, acoustical and other protections for the payloads inside during liftoff, just like Ariane 5. It also provides the thermal protection of the launcher uh, with respect to the uh, molecular flux of the uh, uh, high layers of uh, high density layers of the atmosphere, which we don't have above 100 kilometers, roughly. So yes, we we're almost in vacuum, and then the fairing uh, will be jettisoned, so we don't need it anymore. Weighs uh, weigh measures four meters in diameter roughly 11 meters in length what's it weigh about a ton i imagine about i guess so it's a uh, dead weight which we don't need anymore uh some words on the uh, flight safety uh we have uh safety flight safety uh, uh system which uh, will enables us to uh, verify that the uh, launcher is following its trajectory
which you can follow on the curve there. And uh, in case of any failure or problem on board, then we would uh, uh, trigger a uh, destruction command so that the, uh, the uh, flight requirements are met and the launcher is, is not uh, able to provoke any casualties. Second stage burning now. Second stage uh, carrying 64 tons of liquid oxygen, 26 tons of kerosene. The propulsion system is a little different than Ariane. Alex will have a word on that uh, in a moment. Second stage produced by DSSKB Progress, like the boosters, prepared in Samara in Russia. Coming up, about 10 more seconds left in the second stage burn. Normal. Everything normal on board. You can hear the DDO. So, so we are flying over the Atlantic Ocean, and then all the uh, different stages after separation will fall down into the uh, into the water, into the Atlantic. Into the Atlantic. All right. We also have a, a naval uh, station, a tracking station on board the boat. And there's the separation of the second and third stages. The DDO has called out one particularity of Soyuz, whereas with Ariane, we uh, separate the lower stage. Before igniting the upper stage, Soyuz does exactly the opposite. The upper stage, third stage, is ignited two seconds before the separation of the lower stage. You can see how that works there. Uh, the upper part of the second stage, which is called the skirt, is used to channel the flux of this motor ignition above in the third stage down to the stage below where it rebounds, which gives an added thrust upwards, assisting separation. And then the second stage skirt is then separated about 30 seconds after that. It was still following the flight and the launch parameters and the flight parameters, which are exactly according to we're right where we should be. Altitude 170, speed four and a quarter kilometers per second. Remember, uh, when we reach uh, roughly seven, we're going to. Well, let's let's go back to the launch 